And here it is. So, I guess I'm going to talk about fat phobia and Harry Potter. In the current climate of reevaluating Harry Potter as a work and J.K. Rowling as an author, I mostly see a kind of general acceptance that the Harry Potter books have a fat phobia problem. But what I don't see very often is an understanding of exactly how bad the issue is. As I was going through the books to prep for this, I decided that I needed to make a video focused on one character specifically. Because we need to talk about Dudley Dursley. So, what do you remember about Dudley? Probably, if you're like most people, you remember that he was a mean fat bully who bullies Harry, and that's about it. If you're a fan, maybe you would be able to come up with a little bit more. Like, Dudley is Harry Potter's cousin and was a mean fat bully who bullies Harry. I think it's fair to say that he's not exactly overly explored as a character. My personal memory was that Dudley was a mean fat bully who bullies Harry and is redeemed in the later books after he loses some weight. And I wasn't exactly wrong about that, but when I went back and looked, it's so much worse than I remember. The reason I wanted to focus on Dudley specifically is because J.K. Rowling is playing around with some really ugly stereotypes about fat kids. And I think that deserves to be very specifically called out as a serious issue that I don't feel like has been properly addressed at all. Okay, so let's begin with the general ways fatness is talked about in Harry Potter. Fat people's fatness is almost always mentioned when the fat characters are mentioned or described especially when they are bad fat people. Dudley is described as having a fat head, fat wrists, fat arms, and fat legs. We are also treated to multiple mentions of Dudley having a big fat butt because that's certainly an appropriate way for an adult to describe a fictional child. We also get other characters who have fat thumbs, fat fingers, fat cheeks. Lord, let this be on their faces. Or as an immensely fat, melting, iced cake. And Joanne frequently likes to mention fat people having multiple chins, so that's nice. Fat people never just do things in the Harry Potter books. Fat people don't walk anywhere. They waddle or lumber or have a heavy tread. Fat people fat their way down the street fatly while fatting around. And if you think I'm kidding, there's a description of Dolores Umbridge where she literally turns squatly. <sighs> Moving on. So, no matter what you think about the thing that J.K. Rowling said on her blog in 2006 about fat people, and we will get there, but not in this video, it seems very clear to me that she is extremely hyper aware of fatness and fat bodies in a way that is just kind of bizarre to me as a fat person who generally doesn't think of myself as a fat person fatly fatting around my tweets notwithstanding. I generally just think of myself as a person, but it sure is fun to see how people like JK can't see anything other than my size. But even more troubling than the extremely negative general hyper-awareness that Harry Potter as a text has of fat people is the book's repeated use of dehumanizing language. According to the Wikipedia article, dehumanization is the denial of full humanness in other people and the cruelty and suffering that accompanies that denial. The article also defines dehumanization as the viewing and treatment of other persons as though they lack the mental capacities that are commonly attributed to human beings. In his article, One Face of Dehumanization, Animalization, Adrian Solomon writes, Dehumanization is a deliberately distorted perception of otherness. He also writes that attributing traits of an animal to a human being is the straightest way to dehumanization. In Harry Potter, fat characters are repeatedly compared to animals, and especially Dudley. Dudley is compared to a gorilla and a whale, but mostly Joanne likes to compare this fictional child to a pig. He is porky, has piggy eyes, a piggy face, porky hands, ham-like hands, and etc. Harry calls him a pig in a wig at the beginning of the first book. And before Harry goes off to Hogwarts, sweet, kind, gentle Hagrid magics a pig's tail onto Dudley's butt that has to be later removed with surgery. And that's in the text. We are not meant to consider Dudley as a human being like Harry is, and a major part of the way that JK makes this character into the hated other is by repeatedly using his size 
to compare him to an animal. What was that quote again? Attributing traits of an animal to a human being is the straightest way to dehumanization. Ah, right. In the past, Harry Potter fans have tried to excuse the dehumanization of a fictional child by telling me that it's okay for Dudley to be described this way because he's a bully. Okay, so first of all, I need you to understand that Harry Potter is a thing J.K. Rowling made up and everything in it is something she decided to put in there. Because if you don't acknowledge that, we really can't go any further. Dudley is a mean fat bully because that's how Joanne wrote him. He could have been a mean thin bully, but he isn't. And that is a choice, a choice that she made. So let's talk about why this is a huge problem. J.K. Rowling repeatedly conflates Dudley's bullying with his size. In the beginning of the first book, she writes, Dudley was very fat and hated exercise. Unless, of course, it involved punching somebody. Dudley is big, so he uses his size to terrorize smaller children. This is a well-worn trope about fat kids, but it's exactly backwards. Because we can see in multiple studies, fat kids are the ones getting bullied. A lot. A study in 2004 showed that fat kids were more likely to be the victim of bullies than to be the bullies themselves. A study in 2012 showed that the rates of fat kids being bullied was higher than any other form of bullying. Bullying for kids who were LGBTQ were at the next highest rates, but were still less than the amounts of bullying over fatness. Another study in 2013 on fat kids showed that the majority of the kids reported that they were the victims of bullies. And in that study, the kids reported bullying not only by peers, but by teachers and parents also. We have targeted fat kids as the face of the fake obesity epidemic, and this public health message has consequences. Really bad ones. Because where exactly are these kids meant to go for help if the bullies also include teachers and parents? If everyone believes that bigger children are automatically the aggressors in any situation, how are they supposed to find help? Well, they mostly don't, because apparently no one thinks that bullying fat kids is a problem. Bullying over fatness is almost never included in the anti-bullying programs used by schools, which leads to the next issue. Being fat, or even just thinking that you are fat, is correlated to an increase in suicide attempts in teens. And I find it sickening that pretty much no one seems to care. I guess when the schools are putting BMI on the kids' report cards, they are also indicating that fat kids get what they deserve, because I don't know what else I'm supposed to think. And let me stop you right there before anyone gets in my comment section to say that fat kids really should be bullied so that they lose weight for health. Number one, you are the problem here, not fat children. Number two, that is not how motivation works. Number three, Permanent weight loss is not realistic for the majority of people, and I have literally done a bunch of videos discussing the science behind me saying that now. I am not going to engage with you if you haven't even bothered to look into the basics. Number four, mental health is also health, and calling for the continued tormenting of fat children is not what I would call a healthy outlook for a culture to have. And if you think that it is, you are the problem, not the fat kids. The dehumanizing language in Harry Potter, comparing a child to a pig and leaning hard into ugly stereotypes about fat kids when in reality, they are the ones who are getting bullied sometimes to death is pretty gross and awful. But it gets even worse than that. When we have a moral panic, like the fake obesity epidemic, we as a culture need someone to blame. And like so many people, Joanne blames the parents for the size of the child. The Dursleys overindulge Dudley, and that is presented as the source of his monstrous fatness. It's barely even subtext. What could be a better example of the Dursleys' terrible overindulgence than Dudley having two bedrooms, one of which is only filled with broken toys, while thin, heroic Harry is forced to sleep under the stairs in a cupboard? J.K. Rowling is many things, but subtle is not one of them. So, what is her prescription for fixing these fat children? Why, it's that the authorities need to get involved. The school nurse had seen what Aunt Petunia's eyes simply refused to see, that far from needing extra nourishment, Dudley had reached roughly the size and weight of a young killer whale. Wow, 
I sure hope this fictional school nurse described the fictional child to his fictional mother in exactly that way. It's unbelievable. But what's even worse is when Dumbledore confronts the Dursleys about how they have treated Harry while he lived with him. Dumbledore, the deus in the Harry Potter deus ex machina, the explainer of things and the deliverer of reasons, says the following. You have never treated Harry as a son. He has known nothing but neglect and often cruelty at your hands. The best that can be said is that he has at least escaped the appalling damage you've inflicted upon the unfortunate boy sitting between you. Okay, so let me get this straight. Locking Harry in a cupboard and refusing to feed him is better than what happened to Dudley, who is fat. Cool. Maybe this didn't strike you the way it struck me. Maybe you thought that Dumbledore meant that Dudley is a mean bully. But first of all, does Dumbledore even know that? Secondly, it literally doesn't matter because Dudley's bullying is explicitly connected to his fatness within the text. Dudley was very fat and hated exercise, unless of course it involved punching somebody. There is no way to think of Dudley that doesn't include both his fatness and his bullying because Joanne wrote it that way. So we have Dumbledore, the ultimate arbiter of authority in the Harry Potter universe, outright telling the audience that the Dursleys having a mean fat son is worse than when they spent a decade abusing a different child. Now, I really feel like I should not have to say this, but I'm going to. Speaking as a fat person, who was a fat child, who survived vicious abuse at the hands of my parents, simply being fat is not worse than being abused by the people who are supposed to take care of you. And I think it's pretty sick that we live in a culture where I have to say something like that that should be obvious, but apparently is not. Now, you may be wondering, okay, this is bad. This is all bad, but these are just kids' books for kids, right? Right? Well, let's go take a look at what's currently happening over on Transphobia Island. Oh look, they're taking fat kids away from their parents just because the kids are fat. Even after the judge found that the children in question clearly had very good parents, she still violently broke up a happy family simply because the children were fat. And it's not the first time this has happened, and it doesn't just happen in the UK. That is why this matters, because the attitudes that Dudley Dursley represents are used to make the lives of real fat kids into a living nightmare hell. Because you can hate and abuse fat people out in the open and have everyone see it and still literally no one cares and no one says anything. Because you all don't think fat people are really people. Next time on Hi, I Hate It Here. The Harry Potter fandom's non-reaction to JK's open fat phobia, how that fat phobia connects to her transphobia, and then she wrote more books, and that was worse. A special thank you goes out to Dark Souls Sauron. I literally could not have made this video without your help. A million times thank you. You are amazing. As always, thank you to all the fat activists, past, present, and future, for all the work you have done and will do. You'll probably never get the credit you deserve, but your work is literally everything to me, and I love and appreciate you all. If you like this video, why not hit like and subscribe? If you didn't like it, okay. Bye.